good afternoon, everybody. I'm your host, Crystal, and this is another edition of the 9 O'Clock Meltdown podcast on location. Once again, I am upstairs of Wusso's Concert Coffee House, formerly known as Beaners Central. Uh, not too much of a name change, uh, but, well, not much of a change, though, but it's pretty great. They repainted the walls. They're now a beautiful kind of blue color instead of that dark purple. I am joined upstairs here with Leif Hinkle. Hello, sir. Hello. That's me. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And now I saw you play with Stardust Collective, well, probably about two months ago now. Yeah, I say. And you, you kind of, you were the first runner up, kind of brought out the band. It was just you and your guitar. Yep. And I was immediately captivate, captivated uh, by your music. Um, awesome. You're a very kind of straightforward singer-songwriter. Um, your music doesn't have a whole lot of fluff behind yeah. it, I guess. You don't hide behind innuendos and uh, quite a few of your songs are about your wife and your kid and yeah. your job and living in Duluth here. Yeah. <laughs> so how did all that kind of come to be? I mean, is that what um, you always wanted to write about was real I mean, life? Kind of just like organically has happened as I've because I've been writing songs since like, well, like 14 or something, you know, just picking up guitar and slowly started writing words. And then I just kind of, as I have progressed in my songwriting, I just kind of want to get more truthful and more things that I can like really stand behind and really like sing and in years after be like, I still feel this way because it was completely true, you know, it's not some like weird metaphor I was maybe going for and then mm -hmm. I, a couple of years change, you know, and you, it maybe feels different or I don't know, like... Yeah, no high school angst. Yeah, you know, <laughs> all that stuff or yeah, like, just trying to just be as honest as I can to me and I guess I'm also very inspired by like, um, a lot of those like Doomtree crew, you know, and like okay. POS is like one of my favorite just like writers you know and he's very honest with what he's saying so I definitely like have been inspired by all of them and like I guess kind of go mm -hmm. for that too okay. I think it's awesome mm -hmm. you know yeah it's it's wonderful when you're able to kind of speak or rather sing a truth about something and it's not you know a a, a thought of an, an ex or something from yeah. you know 10 12 years ago so <laughs> yeah wonderful and then if yeah. I get questioned on like a lyric or something I'm yeah. like I have a legit response to it it's not mm -hmm. like oh I just mm -hmm. kind of wrote that because it sounded nice with that other line and I don't know <laughs> you know mm -hmm. right right and like I said you're you're a very straightforward kind of singer songwriter is that the angle that you wanted to hit with this music I guess more so now, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been working on an album with a buddy, so I've been like writing new songs and trying to kind of yeah, focus on where I want to go with it. Okay. And yeah, just continuing with that, yeah, as on, being as honest and straightforward as possible, but with, with still like being catchy and not being like... Cliché? Yeah, cliché. Yeah, hit over the head with just like, okay, there's like no metaphors and there's nothing mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I'm trying to boost it up a little bit, like we're throwing in some drums and throwing in some bass to kind of give it more of that full feeling, okay. you know? Mm -hmm. Just to try to get some more of that impact. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this I feel album. Like I maybe kind of <laughs> went off, but what happened? No, no, that's fine. Ta like I said, <laughs> tangents are welcome, and yeah. you can swear too. It's okay. Um, so with this new album, are you in like a studio setting? Are you in an at home just studio in his house. setting? Okay. In his, um, like I guess it would be a spare bedroom. I just converted to computer mics, has some amps around. Mm -hmm. Fun, and fun. This... Can you say who you're working with? Yeah, this guy at night piking in. He's not, um, he's been doing it forever. He's not, it's not like a record label or anything mm -hmm. like that. Just mm -hmm. a buddy. And he's awesome at it. Like, it sounds so good. I'm mm -hmm. very excited to release it. Yeah. What, to, what platform are you going to release it on? Um, and everything. I like, you know, internet, streaming sites, all that. I'll have it up on Bandcamp. I have it as a free download. Mm -hmm. I'm very, I would like to maybe get some merch eventually, you know, like a CD. Mm -hmm something kind of I've been playing with the idea of going into jump drives because it seems like CDs are kind of dying 
you know? Yeah. Like, you know, iTunes is definitely up there and Bandcamp and Spotify. And, yeah, just yeah. everyone does the streaming and all that stuff mm-hmm. now. So it's yeah. like, that's really what people go for. And I know some people like CDs, but I thought it might be cool to have like a jump drive, mm-hmm. buy for five bucks, and then you can have like my whole discography on it. You know, oh, okay. So mm-hmm. kind of having a more of an incentive to buy the merch. I don't know. Stuff yeah. I'm playing with. Yeah. But first of all, just out for free. Because I think it's most important that people can get it for free. You know, just at least the digital copy. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's how I have fallen in love with bands is when you have an album on your phone for years and like you listen to it a little bit. Maybe you're like, oh, it's okay. And you come back to it and then like it'll just hit you. Like, I love this, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Very cool. Um, I guess is, and now I've I've talked to a lot of different artists, and mm-hmm. you know it's 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 that double edged sword of you know how do we get our music out there, but then at the same time we want to make a little money off of it. Yeah. Uh, I guess where does the free kind of come into play? Is that just I trying mean, to get your name out there, or at this point it's kind of like I have a job, I have a full time job, mm-hmm. and I'm making money from that, so it's not like. I need to kind of like hustle and get this money, you know? So it's, Mm -hmm. yeah, more for just getting it out there, getting my name out there, getting my music out there to whoever might want to listen to it. And if, you know, there's like the pay if you want on Bandcamp, so if people throw me some bucks, it's very welcome. But Mm -hmm. I also Mm kind of feel like through my whole time writing music, it's like you are making this music by yourself and writing it and like I'm just with the guitar you know it's not like I'm spending any money to create it it's all just coming out of me and my head and the guitar mm-hmm. so it almost feels a little weird to ask for money okay you know because okay. it's mm-hmm. like I just did this for free why can't you just listen to it oh, you know very like, cool very cool sir but then there's the double-edged sword of like, oh, it would be nice to have some money. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where playing shows comes into play and exactly. having merch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Merch right. and shows. Mm-hmm. And like I said, ultimately, I have a job. I'm getting some money. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like with this album, I'm trying to just do it mostly for fun, just something that I can be proud of. And like, if I get some money from it, awesome. But mostly... Mm-hmm trying to not let that be a factor because I don't need it to be a factor oh, okay you know? yeah so you definitely want to hit more of kind of that artist trade of this is a part of me let me give it to you yeah exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. rather than the Very hustle of it. rather than the hustle of everything else yeah yes perfect wonderful sir wonderful yeah. so it kind of sounds like you're really taking the DIY approach to this then mm-hmm yeah definitely I think that's the coolest approach to do if you can swing it you know obviously you can like you hit a certain sound and like production quality by going to a studio and like speed mm-hmm. too like I've been working on this with my buddy for over a year now mm-hmm. we were working on a song last night and realized a year ago at this exact same time we were working on this same song and I was oh. redoing some like <laughs> lyrics for okay. it but mm-hmm. I just like to like you know take our time mm-hmm. not stress mm-hmm. it it'll come out sometime in 2020 I don't even have really a date or any of that mm-hmm. stuff yeah but it will happen in 2020. Right. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, do you have a, a website that people can go to? Do you usually use social media for your posts and things like that? I've gotten back onto social media because I think you kind of need it. I was off Facebook forever mm-hmm. and I just came to too many times of like, come to our Facebook page and contact us here you oh. know, if we're trying to play shows. Mm-hmm. So kind of reluctantly I'm back on the face space. But <laughs> um, I do a website. The, it's just my name, L-E-I-F-H-I-N-K-E-L, leafhankel.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and just through WordPress, a little thing I'll do myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Bandcamp through there, Facebook, some of that, st- all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, Leaf, wonderful. And now, uh, Leaf Hinkle, that's a very unique name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, you don't hear... Uh, people named Leaf anymore. Is that yeah. your Norwegian roots coming out? Yes, you know, I'm, and I'm not sure if it's Norwegian or Swedish or like even I think maybe Danish. I think in Danish it's Leif and like the Leif is the traditional mm-hmm. pronunciation of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just saying all sorts of like Northern European and then Hinkle I think is German. My dad's German, but yeah, Swedish mm-hmm. roots. Obviously my brother's name is Shell and it's spelled K-J-E-L-L. So if I'm ever, like, growing up, I was like, my name's kind of weird. I'm like, well, my brother's got it worse. (laughs) (laughs) 
interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. very Swedish. Yes, yes. Hey, that's fine. We're in the Scandinavian area of the U.S. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, up here in northern Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> and now, Leif, you actually brought your guitar with you today. I did. Uh, did you, were you planning on playing a few songs? Yeah, or? I definitely would. Wonderful, wonderful. We'll catch that here in a minute. Um, so you're... You've got. Do you have some music out on Bandcamp now, or? Yeah, I have. Um, I have two EPs <laughs> out. I have one I made like I think in 2013, so like a while ago when I was living out in Seattle, mm -hmm. and then we moved. When I moved back here to Minnesota in like what 2015 ish, I think that's when I did that other one with a friend at work who's also you know very talented recording and mastering and all that and he was like you should make something else and he mm -hmm. kind of helped push me into that which thank god because i just i had a kid mm -hmm. shortly coming back to duluth so it definitely take took some like time away from the focused you know craft but with this album i was able to record mm -hmm. another little ep so i have two little eps out but with this album i want i'm trying to get more of like the sound i'm kind of going for now mm -hmm. Not like my old little step isn't, because it's still me, you know, mm -hmm. but trying to get more of that is really what I'm going for. And like mm -hmm. like I said, putting in some drums and bass and making yeah, more of yeah. like a full-on album instead of just an EP of mm -hmm. four songs. Perfect, perfect. How has your songwriting changed throughout the years, or has it not? Um, It's definitely changed. I think it, it'll be kind of influenced by, you know, who I'm really listening to and who I'm really into at the time. I've... Over the years, I've gotten more into like the hip hop and rap genre versus coming from like you know in high school, especially when I first started playing guitar, listening to like you know, Bright Eyes and you know, Death Cab for Cutie, all the typical like mm -hmm. play guitar and I can sing and all those bands, mm -hmm. and then going into more hip hop where there's like such an emphasis on words and what they're saying, you know, right, and right. there's so much of a story there and like. I kind of definitely take some of that and I had some friends in the more like heavier bands so I like to kind of have a little more I guess like aggression with my playing but it, I still think it's pretty like mm -hmm. groovy so yeah, I've gotten yeah. more like away from the like kind of chords and at least what I think of as like your basic acoustic or classic like acoustic guitar if you say like I play acoustic guitar you kind of think of like oh mm -hmm. G, C, some Right, right. Like, the really folky kind of singer-songwriter. Yeah, so stepping type. away from that. But mm -hmm. the acoustic guitar is just so awesome. I can't like leave the guitar because it feels so good <laughs> to hold, and I love being mm -hmm. able to play it on yeah. amplified and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you definitely have a kind of unique way of playing. It's almost kind of like a, a chucking way of playing the guitar, mm -hmm. and then that kind of complements your voice. I mean, there. Um, when I saw you on stage, there were moments where it was kind of like a, a, a slam poetry almost sure, but then yeah. you'd kind of throw it in with a little bit of kind of singing over the top so it's it's definitely unique and it definitely works for what you're trying to get to well, so it's always good to hear <laughs> <laughs> because someone's like is this just for me <laughs> you know? no no and then um actually at the show you were uh, passing out stickers mm -hmm. as well so is that kind of your only merch that you have at the moment right now yeah i had to have something so i have okay. this little it's a little leaf that i've had on my guitar case not my soft case but mm -hmm. my old you know real hard guitar case with the stickers on it mm -hmm. i had drew this little leaf on it when i was like first starting guitar and mm -hmm. I've just kind of stayed and one time I was like you know took a picture of it turned into stickers and now I have some kind of merch mm -hmm. so oh. people can at least get to the website mm -hmm. to hopefully get to the music to hopefully download it to have it on their phone and then years later listen to it and become obsessed with it <laughs> <laughs> wonderful well I'm already obsessed so. oh, awesome. <laughs> excellent excellent sir how did you get into kind of guitar playing and songwriting um I think just kind of coming from uh, kind of the artsy family. Like my mom is a UMD professor, but also an artist. Um, has shows around Duluth and is like, goes to a lot of Sweden. She's very like um, Swedish folk art influenced. Mm -hmm. And my name is Leif and my brother's name is Shell. Very Swedish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she like definitely pulls from that. Um, and then my father, he's a printer, does a lot of, um, and like book binder, but um, does like, you know, What's that linoleum cutting? Oh, and okay. Does you know prints with that and has 
kind of a story writer and all that. So it's a definitely like an artistic household mm -hmm. and a lot of just kind of building up in that area if any kid showed any interest in any type of art, you know. Or and there was a lot of kind of pushing us in that direction. Mm, okay. My brother and sister kind of went a little more theater. My sister's now in New York. Um going to school, almost graduating for, mm -hmm. you know, acting and doing that whole thing. Oh, wow. Good for her. Good yeah. for her. So is she looking more at kind of like the Broadway thing or? I think really at this point is probably really what she can grab and just trying mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. out there because it'd be awesome. I know if she could like have that as your job, just, mm -hmm. you know, obviously what you went to school for, but if it's something you really love, like acting, mm -hmm. I think it's probably right now just kind of what she can get and mm -hmm. build up that line or get into that world, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe she could act in one of her music videos. Yeah. <laughs> I'll There's... buy a plane ticket out from New York and I'll say, like, especially from New York City. <laughs> Pump it up. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Perfect, perfect. And Leaf, you had mentioned that you actually uh, moved back to Duluth from Seattle. Yep. Uh, what brought you out there? And I guess what brought you back, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, no, not at all. I moved out. Um, originally, it was I was in a band, um, I the Sky, me and a buddy, kind of acoustic, folky duo. And we moved out to Seattle um, to pursue the dream, you know. Okay, kind of, kind of Nirvana? Nirvana yeah, dream? Exactly. That's what like, everyone was like, oh, like Nirvana? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, just bigger city, wanted to get away from home too. Mm -hmm. And probably like th three to six months after moving out, our band broke up, as oh. bands do. Mm -hmm. So, continued doing my own like solo stuff out there, mm -hmm. but kind of towards the end. I think we were out there for three years, maybe four, some three to four, probably not a full four, but um, mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, felt the home itch, wanted to be closer to family, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, talking about, you know, maybe in the future we'll have our own family and it'd be nice to be home if we wanted to make that ball happen. Mm -hmm. Moved home, wound up starting a family much sooner, but mm -hmm. it's been awesome, yeah. you know, to yeah. like, and looking back, like, thank God we were here with my parents are here, her parents are here, mm -hmm. got all that support, yeah, and good, good. then being from Duluth, it's like, you know, it's awesome raising a kid here, because I know where to go, I know where I like to do, because I grew up here, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. thinking, like, doing this in Seattle, would be like, obviously you can do it, but it'd be a little, a little scarier, you know, just okay. like, not sure where you're going, or what to, what to expect in certain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. places, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you don't have that support. Right, right. Excellent, excellent. So, did you meet your wife out in Seattle, or did you meet here? And met here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, met here um, pretty shortly after I graduated um, through that buddy that I was in the front band with. Oh, and then, okay. Um, she was like, "You guys are moving to Seattle? I'll come with you." And I'm like, "Awesome!" Moved out there. Um, so it was pretty quick. We just kind of clicked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you're a cool lady, and. The rest is history. Rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, welcome back to Duluth. Yeah. Uh, sounds like you've been here quite a while, though. Yeah, I've been here at this point like four years. Four, it's been back in four or five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, Leaf. Wonderful. And how I was years, how sorry. was Seattle for you? I mean, how was the kind of music scene out there? Was it hard to get into? Is it, it just really vast? I mean, it felt, yeah, vast, you know, because there's mm -hmm. like... There's already, you know, in Duluth, I'm surprised how many bands are in Duluth. And you see names, and you're like, I've never heard of that band. Especially when Homegrown rolls around. It's oh, like, yeah. where are all these bands? I'm so unaware, <laughs> you know? And so then Seattle, bigger city, there's just like all these bands. Mm -hmm. And being, you know, in a new town and not necessarily as like um, confident as I would be maybe now to just like really get my name out there and really just like mm -hmm. dig and look for it. It's like, oh, shoot out some stuff and got that. Like I still played shows and got some like connections, but yeah. it definitely felt like I was kind of just like on the outside starting to chip in, but mm -hmm. kind of hard to get into that real, like, I was like, there has to be an awesome scene here, but right. Mm -hmm. You never managed to tap into it. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not not like Wusso's, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where you yeah. can this place is awesome. Like yes. they can I've come to so many shows here from like touring bands that I've never seen, but mm -hmm. 
people will come and just like fill the place in and oh yeah mm-hmm. have a, just a fun show yeah you know? yeah i used to run sound here actually i oh, did okay. it for a couple years nice. and yeah the the house was packed on a friday night yeah definitely so mm-hmm. i can attest to that and yeah. and you know so is like the great connector i mean i just met nick from one last guest he's a barista here um, so okay. that was really is cool. Another local band. Right? It is. Okay, yep. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been trying to get him on the show for a while now, and uh, nice. yeah, he asked me when I said I was renting the upstairs today. Okay. He's like, "Oh, you're you're Crystal, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "You do podcasting, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Oh, I'm one less guest." I'm like, "Oh." Yeah, nice. Well, theory should be easy. If it's right there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Pull exactly. We need the rest of the band, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful leaf. Wonderful. So you're working on a, an album here. It's been yes. about a year in the making, yep. uh, but you're really kind of honing it in and getting that sound that you really want. Yeah. At this point, it's almost all recorded. I have to finish one more song and record that. And that's like half recorded, but like finish writing words and a second, like a little guitar part. And then besides that, it's just you know, trying to get some bass tracks, get some drum tracks, kind of fill in just maybe some fun things to, Mm -hmm. because I really love when an album is, you know, a full thought and like stuff kind of bleeds Mm -hmm. into each other. Okay. It's like a whole little piece. And it's not necessarily like a concept album. Like, and that's, you know, the ultimate, like there's this band Snooze. Shout out to Snooze, this album Flamiliaris. I've been obsessed with it for the past like, month or two months however long i've been listening to it and the whole piece just like flows together it's like one big song mm-hmm. it's i love it you know okay perfect so i would like to kind of emulate that a little bit it won't quite be on that level <laughs> you'll get there yeah you'll get there yeah someday. yeah all right perfect and leaf what do you have coming up i mean besides kind of working on this album do you have any shows no shows at the moment okay just kind of throwing some emails out not not like hunting too aggressively, but mm-hmm. I I know something something always comes mm-hmm. up. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. And we have some wonderful uh, mood background music here. I don't know if anybody else can hear it, but it's like so. some piano music going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of music, you did bring your guitar. Uh, yeah. I would love for you to showcase a song if that's okay. Definitely, I would love to Our... showcase a song. Excellent, excellent. I'll let you grab that, sir. Sweet. Leaf Hinkle here on the 9 o'clock meltdown. I'm upstairs of Wusso's Concert Coffee House here in West Duluth, here in Minnesota. This is another edition of the 9 o'clock meltdown podcast. I'm just letting Leaf get out his guitar. He's going to showcase a song for us here. And not on the chair with arms. <laughs> but it looks like they've been hit up a little bit. So. Good. I'm take that home with me. No, no, not at all. Not at all. And so you picked up the guitar when you were 16, earlier than that? Um, probably, I'd say around 14, maybe. I know it was um, pretty shortly after School of Rock came out. Okay. I was like, oh, that's so awesome. These kids, like, Jack Black is so funny, and these kids, like, shred in. And I, like, really like the drummer. I was like, I want to be a drummer. But easier to get a guitar than a drum set. Oh. <laughs> and, Did you ever pursue any drumming in yeah, school or I, I anything? Yeah, I still I have a drum set now and I was in a band playing drums for a little bit and I've always kind of had that. Drums are so fun. Mm-hmm. It's probably the most fun instrument to play cuz you're just dancing basically. You know? <laughs> very awesome. true, very true. All right. Well, sir, I will let you take it away here. What are we going to hear? Um, let me tune quick. Sorry. No, that's all right. No, you're fine. Tuning is needed. Oh, it's beautiful. It's the tuning song. All right, the song I'm going to play is my one of my newest songs because it's the most fun to play. Um, entitled "Yuck," and the other night I was playing it a little faster than I normally play it, mm-hmm. but it was fun. So I think I'm going to try to do it that way. For this podcast. All right, perfect. So it'll be a podcast exclusive. Excellent. <laughs> Leave Hinkle, everyone. I think you tried too hard. 
vibe with it You're on some new shit, don't tell me about it If I start to come around this roundabout and find it But honestly, probably not Modesty's something you're lacking Quality's something you probably ought to get tracking Shit, let's get going We'll get moving And sitting along with a room of folks losing And me, shit, fuck man, I've got my own place Some girls and some friends I like it that way Everyone, and that was a song entitled Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> right. Perfect, sir. Perfect. I can definitely hear, as you were saying earlier, kind of that uh, uh, POS kind of uh, influence coming through. Yeah. Now, did you take vocal lessons? Were you in choir at all? Um, no, never really. I mean, I took like a year of choir, I think, in middle school, because I think everyone has to. But, <laughs> you know, that was it. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom was a big singer, too, so it's. Mm -hmm. One of those things, lots of singing in the house, and mm -hmm. just kind of. When I first started doing guitar and singing, you feel a little like naked, or you know, like oh, my Exposed. voice isn't good enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. And then just kind of like whatever, it doesn't matter, and I can do it. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Do you still remember your first show? I mean, were there lots of butterflies or? Yeah, first show was actually in Beaners, Beaner Central. Oh, okay, at the time, perfect. Now, so was, mm -hmm. um, me and another older buddy, acoustic stuff, and very much like chordy, like mm -hmm. more, which I consider more basic guitar. Not to hate on anyone who plays chords, but <laughs> that's how I categorize it in my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and still, I mean, I definitely still get like nervous before shows and butterflies and all that. Mm -hmm. I just can't. It's never really left. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I actually, uh, I remember an interview from someone a long time ago, I wish I could remember their name, but they said if you don't get butterflies, there's no point yeah. in doing it anymore. So, yeah, that's, I mean, I've heard that too, and I definitely think there's like some truth to that. Mm -hmm. kind of 
shows that I care. At least I feel like it shows that I care <laughs> how I do. It's mm -hmm. not, not just phoning it in and mm -hmm. leaving. Right, right. And now your your music is very kind of straightforward, like I said before, kind of mm -hmm. really raw. And you do write about your wife and your kid quite mm -hmm. a bit in your yeah. music. Is that kind of where your main influence comes from? Or is that just another extension of yourself? Definitely, probably both, you know, mm -hmm. extension of myself and... Um, just trying to, you know, write and be as honest as I can. They're just like such a big part of my life. It's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. they kind of always pop into my head and same with like my bikes. I'm always biking to work, oh, you okay. know, it's mm -hmm. like during the summer, it's I'm on my bike all the time and it's just, it's so much fun. And I found that a couple of years ago, you know, obviously bikes as a kid, but then kind of came back to like really biking as like commuting. And it's just like, it's like being a kid, you know, Mm -hmm. around the city and it's super fun <laughs> all right wonderful sir wonderful so you're you're working on a full-on mm -hmm. album that'll be released sometime in 2020 mm -hmm. uh, no shows really lined up yet but you do have a couple EPs out on Bandcamp if mm -hmm. people are interested um, anything else no, I don't think so. Not really. <laughs> Gonna hibernate for the winter then? Gonna hibernate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of what everyone does around here, I've noticed. <laughs> like, during the summertime, there are shows everywhere, all over the place, all the time. Yeah. And then in the winter, it really does kind of pitter off. Yeah, and hopefully, yep. yeah, like, really figure out this album this winter and, like, mm -hmm. get all that fine tune and tighten up all those lo loose nuts and bolts mm -hmm. and maybe by the summer have it done. All right. Excellent. Perfectly. Perfect. Well, Leaf, thank you so much for stopping into Beaners this afternoon and show, sharing your thoughts and your music with us. It's absolutely wonderful and such an honor, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you again so much. Yes. For Do you have a song that you'd like to close out with? Or? Um, yeah, I, could, I would definitely play a song to close out with. Excellent. Leaf Hinkle, everyone, upstairs at Wu So's Concert Coffee House. This is the song I usually start shows with, but it's a little slower, so it feels kind of appropriate for an outro, I guess. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Thank you. 